Okay, hi there. Welcome to a macro video. We're going to take a look for a few minutes at the concept of the output gap and how it links to the economic cycle. So the output gap is a macroeconomic concept and it's the difference between the actual level of a country's GDP, that's the value of the output of goods and services produced within an economy, the difference between that and the estimated potential level of GDP. And we normally measure normally express the output gap as a percentage of the level of potential output. Let's take a look first of all at the data for the UK. Obviously lots of interesting things happening in 2020. Uh, there's a cyclical feel to the data here of course. The recession in 2008-2009 followed by a slow recovery and then a more sustained recovery in GDP all the way through to 2018-2019 uh, when uh, of course output collapsed in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic, the public health crisis and the lockdown, effectively the shutdown of large parts of the economy. Indeed, GDP uh, is estimated in real terms to have fallen by more than 10% in 2020. That's the biggest single drop in over 300 years. Some signs the economy has rebounded uh, as uh, some restrictions on social distancing and things and uh, reopening of retail has has uh, been restrict has been uh, resolved, but the economy is still well below where it was at the start of 2020, and obviously will take some time to recover. I've plotted the blue line showing actual GDP. Of course, we can then put in an estimated trend level of GDP. The the gradient of that purple sort of brown dotted line is the estimated growth of potential GDP, effectively what's happening to a country's productive capacity over time or long run aggregate supply. Uh, when there's a situation when GDP is well below potential, well, we call that a negative <coughs> output gap. Actual GDP is less than potential. And that tends to happen as the economy sinks into a recession. GDP falls below the trend line. And it can take quite a bit of time for that output gap to close as the economy recovers, partly because uh, oftentimes recovery is fairly flat initially, but also because the trend line is positive. GDP potential should be rising most years. When actual GDP equals potential, then the output gap becomes zero. And there may be a situation where, in fact, GDP is above potential. We call that a positive output gap. And most estimates have the UK in that position by sort of the 2018-2019. Not overly so, but actual GDP was above its potential level. Okay, so this chart shows the annual data, the yearly data for GDP. I think probably shows it more clearly what the, what the impact of 2020 has been. A huge fall in the value of real national output. The forecast is that GDP will recover in 2021 and 2022. But can you see that even on this forecast from the Office of Budgetary Responsibility taken in November 2020, even on this forecast, GDP is still below what it was in 2019. And of course, had growth continued on its pre-2020 trajectory, GDP would have been significantly higher, well above £2 trillion. Just again, to put this in, 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 into an historical context, this chart shows the years in which national output in the UK adjusted for inflation, so-called real GDP, the years in which they fell, it fell by more than 4%. And you can see that it's only happened twice in the post-war period, 2009 and this year, 2020. The drop in output in 2020 is the highest since 1710, so 300 years ago. How do we show <clears throat> an output gap on an ADAS diagram? I'm going to use the classical model to show this. Here's an equilibrium level of GDP of Y and 1. And uh, the output gap, we, remember, we go back to our definition, is the gap, the difference between actual and potential GDP. So we need to throw in there a long run supply curve, which shows potential national output. And in this situation, the level of GDP Y1 is less than potential. So the economy is operating a little bit below its potential level. That's nearly always because the level of demand for goods and services is possibly insufficient to generate the output of goods and services, which would allow us to reach potential. Now, if there's a recession, if, uh, if there's a, a fall in aggregate demand, perhaps similar to what we've seen in 2020, uh, then a fall in AD, perhaps caused by a negative 
demand shock will cause AD to fall to AD2. In that situation, the inflationary pressures will diminish. The price level may well uh, in decrease to GPL2, but crucially, uh, that's going to cause a contraction of real GDP. You're going to move down the aggregate supply curve to a new level of output Y2, and that's going to take the economy further away from potential. In that sense, the negative output gap shown by the blue arrows here is widening. It's now the gap between Y2 and YP. Now, a negative output gap means the economy is operating well below its potential. And that means that some factor resources, particularly labor, but it could also be capital in factories and things, factor resources are being underutilized. There is spare capacity. And typically, when we have a large negative output gap, two of the economic problems we see would be relatively low employment, perhaps rising unemployment, and also the risk of deflation. If there's a lot of spare capacity and excess supply in the economy, perhaps there could be the threat of some persistent price deflation. Not always the case, of course, that you have a negative output gap. You can also have a positive output gap. And in this diagram, we see, again, starting out at Y1, a big increase in aggregate demand, perhaps driven by a credit boom, a surge in mortgage lending, a surge in credit loans, driving up consumer spending on goods and services, a big rise in aggregate demand, which now takes the level of national income to Y2 in the short term, which lies above the economy's potential. So in this situation, the new equilibrium of Y2 is above YP, and now we have a positive output gap. The economy is booming. And in this situation, what tends to happen is that you get some inflationary pressures in the economy. Unemployment falling, some scarce resources working well beyond their usual capacity. So therefore, you might have to bring in some shift work over time. And often in this situation, what tends to happen uh, is that businesses in this position, uh, they have to start bidding up prices to get the raw materials, the components, and also the people they need. So often in a, in a boom, the, the rate of wage inflation goes up. Higher costs of supply cause an inward shift of short run aggregate supply. And that will tend to take the economy back towards potential output. The real growth will slow down. Price level goes up to GPL3. And of course, as prices go up, real incomes tend to fall. So you might be a movement back up the demand curve as people's real incomes get squeezed. Either way, it could be the case, and the classical theorists argue this, that an economy may well settle back to potential output where short run supply meets long run supply, uh, but now at a higher price level. So one of the consequences is that you end up with things becoming more expensive. And that's one of the possible effects of a positive output gap. Here's the data again for the UK. What I've done here is I've plotted GDP. And that's the chart we had before, if you think back. Uh, GDP here is in, is in a lovely shade of, of, of dark orange. And I've superimposed onto the chart the output gap, the estimated output gap for the UK. Uh, 2008, at the end of the boom, we had a positive output gap. But then, of course, we get recession, uh, deep recession in the UK. I think output fell something like 6%. So the economy now has a negative output gap. Slow recovery in GDP in the early years of the decade. The upper gap remains negative. The economy is basically recovering, but slowly. So you're still operating below potential. And then gradually we get to a situation where the economy is in line with potential and a little bit perhaps, perhaps even a little bit above a small kind of positive output gap. Sorry, a small positive output gap as we reach 2018, 2019. But then the story changes dramatically. Big fall in real GDP, uh, collapsing output this year, and, and who knows where we're going to go in 2021 and 2022. Now, you you can make a case for saying the output gap will become negative again. It surely has to if actual GDP falls by this extent. But of course, we don't yet know what the consequences of the coronavirus pandemic might be for the level of potential national output. So estimates for the output gap at the moment must be uh, shrouded in plenty of uncertainty. There we go. Hopefully that made sense to you. This has uh, just been a video looking at the concept of the output gap.
and linking it using ADAS analysis, linking it to the economic cycle. Okay, thank you.